Hey guys, my name is Tara and today I'm going to show you how I do real estate photography. Uh, today I am in a one bedroom condo, um, so this is actually perfect for people who are trying to sell or rent um, condos or apartments, but also the tips and tricks I'm going to show you today are applicable to uh, residential homes as well, so I um, hope this helps you out. I'm just going to go over the gear that I work with first. Um, I shoot Nikon um, and I have a Nikon D810. I then use a wide angle lens, it's a 14 to 24 millimeter 2.8 aperture. Um, this is crucial to getting those uh, wide shots of your rooms. Um, you're not going to be able to get those full angles with a phone or even a 35 millimeter lens if you're working with anything um, higher than this. So I definitely recommend a wide angle lens. And then I also always have a tripod for real estate photography. I'm going to be getting into um, why exactly you need to have that stability, um, but a tripod is super critical. And um, I don't have a particular brand that I recommend. I use a Geodos uh, tripod, but um, anything that keeps your camera stable and that you trust to hold everything, um, that's good to go. So once you have your gear all ready, uh, the next thing that I do is prep the space. And whether or not it's furnished, it's still important to go around your space and make sure windows are clean, floors are clean, there's no smudges on stuff that you're going to notice. Um, and in this case, obviously, we're working in an unfurnished condo, um, so there's not a lot that we need to do other than clean the surfaces. But um, if you do have the option to photograph a furnished or a staged area, um, highly recommend it. It makes places look really cozy. And if you're gonna do that, just again, make sure everything is nice and clean and, um, and that you know, there's no blankets sticking out where they shouldn't be and that sort of thing. Um, the other thing I do to prep a space is turn on the lights in, uh, in all the rooms. Um, in some cases, you might not want to use them. They might be distracting, um, but I always do want to be able to showcase what, uh, what type of lighting there is. You have your gear and the space is ready. Next, you need to kind of figure out where you are going to be taking your photos from in the house um, or in the condo. And it is really important. Um, you want to be able to showcase a lot of space. So I always come to the corners and then I also get my tripod um, to be about counter height. With a wide angle lens, you are going to get a lot of distortion if you are not level with the things that you're photographing. And so um, I usually use live view on the back of my camera and I can just tell then um, if my camera is too high I'm gonna have really angled walls and if it's too low I'm gonna have really angled walls so I try and find that happy medium with my camera at about counter height so around three feet tall or so um, depending on what you're photographing you might need to raise it up a little bit and you can just um, you can determine that yourself but this is where I am I'm in a nice corner and I get my tripod as far back as I can I scrunch myself in the corner because I like being here, so I get lots of double chins, it's great. Um, I work from corners to get different angles of the rooms that I'm in. Now we're getting into some of the juicy stuff with the camera settings. Um, first off, white balance. As you can see with lights from the ceiling as well as lights from the natural, uh, natural light coming in through the windows, um, we've got a couple different white balances to play with. Um, I actually do auto white balance and adjust in post. Um, however, if you want to do Kelvin, you can do manual uh, white balance and then you can actually look through your live view and see what looks best for your photos in each room. Um, it's going to be different in your living room, in your kitchen, in your bathroom, depending on what your light sources are and if you have competing light sources. Next is our uh, aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. I choose not to shoot um, wider than an f11 aperture. Um, in a lot of photos, I really love to have a nice blurry background, um, but in real estate, you really want everything to be sharp. So I shoot at f11, f14, usually those are the two. Um, and because I want to make sure that the counter or the bed or whatever that's in front of me is sharp as well as what is behind it. Um, for shutter speed, because I am on a tripod, I can actually make that really, really slow. Um, and that will allow me at a higher aperture um, to, to get the light in that I need. And so I'm often shooting at, uh, starting with like a one second shutter speed, somewhere around there. Um, it really depends. And also my ISO, I'm going to keep at 100. I don't want there to be grain in the images. 
Um, and so I keep that at 100. So my shutter speed is actually my only real variable throughout the shoot. Um, I keep my aperture the same at 11, f11, uh, my ISO at 100, and so then my shutter speed is where I'm changing how much light is coming into my camera. Bracketing, and that is um, taking multiple images at different exposures of the same shot. And so I bracket five images for real estate, and what I'm going to do with those bracketed images is then layer them in post. And I'll have another video about editing real estate photos that you can check out. Um, and I'll go in much more detail about that. But I take five photos of different exposures of the same shot, same part of the room, and those are gonna get layered together. So it's really important to bracket uh, because you're going to have light outside, bright light outside, and then inside is sometimes dark. And when you put those images all together, you're going to get the exposures, even exposures, of all of those things together and it's going to look really nice and um, you're going to get that nice um, that nice range of colors there because i shoot on a tripod um, and i am doing bracketing and and at really slow shutter speed sometimes um, if you have a timer or if you or if you have a remote you can use that i choose to use a timer for my camera and so i put that on a two second delay so that when i push my shutter um, I'm not going to shake the camera right away and then I am able to step away from the camera and then it's going to automatically take five images for me, five shots. So I set my camera on a timer, two second delay to take five shots and then it does it for me right there. So bathrooms can be a little bit tricky, obviously because of the mirrors um, and also because of countertops and toilets and showers. There's just a lot to get in and not a lot of space. So. I am usually angled right in the doorway corner. Um, and I lower my camera or my tripod even a little bit more so that I'm counter height or a little lower. I really am trying to not distort the toilet. Uh, the sink is gonna look a little longer, but it's a nice way to be able to get the entire toilet in as well as showcase the whole bathroom. So uh, just to keep in mind when you're doing a bathroom, uh, lower your tripod a little bit more and if you are getting your camera in the mirror uh, try and line it up so that you can Photoshop yourself or the camera out of it later because that will be important but it's okay if your camera is in the mirror while you're taking it you can take care of that in post all right guys thanks for watching those are my tips for how to take awesome real estate photos and uh, if you want to leave any comments or questions just drop them below um, otherwise if you want to see more videos like this hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you have other ideas for future videos that you would like to see me uh, present to you, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Um, otherwise, thanks so much for watching and uh, good luck with your next real estate shoot.